Today, we geek out about noises at night. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Lee from Geek City USA here, and today we're going to talk about a game called Noises at Night. Now, this is a game designed by Floyd Liu, released by B&B Game Studios, and it's a game for two to four players, uh, ages six and up, and plays in about 15 minutes. It's a game of uh, hidden identity and role deduction, and it's a card game for families, and we're going to take a look at how to play. I'll do a brief run through of the game, and then we will uh, catch it back on the flip side, and we will discuss it at the end. I'll let you know my thoughts. So in Noises at Night, everybody is going to get an identity card. And you'll see here that there are multiple identities, and each identity is going to have an icon in the upper left-hand corner. So you see the boogeyman has a skull, the cat has fish bones, dad has a wrench, and so on. And each player will have one of these. Uh, uh, these are double-sided, but they're, they're just sheets that show you all the characters in the game and then what their uh, icons are. So everybody will randomly get an identity, and then you will take the corresponding identity tokens. You see here, there's one for each identity. And you will randomly place two in every room with the exception of the bathroom. Now during gameplay, you will be playing clue cards. And if you see here, these clue cards also have the symbols on the top of them, and some will also have actions that you can do. And when you play a clue card, you can play it in any of the rooms, at which point you activate, uh, if there's a, an action here, for example this one, you may activate the action on the card, and if you want the action in the room as well. Now, you can also play these cards face down, at which point, if I were to play this card face down, I wouldn't score any of those at the end of the game, but I'd still get to activate the action in the room. So scoring is based upon the icons. So let's say, for example, you are Grandpa. Grandpa's icon is a wrench. Every time a card with a wrench is played, Grandpa and whoever else, Dad, who also has a symbol, will also get a point. So for example, if this card is played, if this is somewhere here, say for example, um, this is just a first player token. But if this is out at the end of the game, everybody with a wrench icon will get one point for each wrench, so this would be worth three points, and then the flower, so sister and mom, would get one point. Now, this becomes important um, because you also get a point for every card played in the room that you are in. So for example, again, Grandpa is in the kitchen. If this card were played in the kitchen, at the end of the game, not only would Grandpa get three points for the wrench, but he would also get one point because he is in the kitchen and there's a card played in the kitchen. So if this card, for example, were played face down in the kitchen later in the game, Grandpa would get two points for cards played. And you would not score any of these icons for this card being played face down. In addition, another way to get points is if you think you know based on play, so let's say that I'm Grandpa and I've been playing cards in this row all day long, and I seem to be playing a lot of wrench cards as well on other rooms trying to be inconspicuous. But let's say that I'm playing wrenches and I'm playing a lot in, in the room that Grandpa's in. Somebody wants to guess that I'm Grandpa, they can guess at the end of the round. Now what happens is, if they're correct, they will get a point based on whatever round we're in. So as you can see, the, the clock says seven, so if my opponent guessed that I was Grandpa, they would get seven points. However, if they were incorrect and they guessed Grandpa, and let's say I was the boogeyman, I would gain seven points because they picked me, but they chose incorrectly. And every round that you play, this will go down one, one notch. So for a three player game, you start at seven. After the first round, this will tick down and you'll also re reveal the first event card. Now events are in place for one full round. And this one, for example, would say each player may discard up to three cards to draw the same amount of new cards. So these are, are cards that come into play that give added actions to the game. Um, at the end of the game, the player with the most points wins, and that's it. All right, so let's go over the room actions here. So if you play a card in the bathroom, you may gain a victory point. 
So if a card was played in here, face up or face down, that player would get a point. If you play into Leo's room, you get to move a clue card to this location. So basically, if there were one of these cards in another location, face up or face down, you could move that into Leo's room, okay? Then the attic, power for the attic, says to flip a card in this room. So what that means is if there's a clue card face down in this room, and I played a card into this room, I can choose to flip a face down card in that room. The kitchen here lets you draw two additional clue cards into your hand. And then finally, the living room lets you play an additional face down card. So if you played a card, say, because you get two actions per turn, so I play a card here, play a card here, and then the living room would let me play an additional face down card, so I could put that, say, there. And that's really the basics of the game. The game is that easy in concept. Uh, there's a lot of strategy uh, when it comes to trying to bluff. You don't want to overplay into the row that your character may be in. But at the same time, you still want to get points. Sometimes you might find yourself playing a lot of, let's say, again, your grandpa, and you're playing a lot of wrenches. You might want to play something in the room that dad's in to maybe have your opponent guess that you are dad and in a different room to kind of steal points that way. So um, that's, that's the basic overview of the gameplay. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, a run through and do a sample three player game. And kind of, it'll show you maybe not so much a strategy because I can't really bluff myself, but it'll give you an idea of how the game flows from turn to turn. All right, so to set up for a three player game, first you set the clock to six. I think I said, um, it was seven for three players. Seven's actually for two players. Six is for three players. And then you're gonna take the clue cards and everybody's going to get four clues. One, two, three, and four. Everybody's going to get an identity card. So shuffle them so I don't know what I'm dealing myself. There's irony there. And then you're gonna place these characters randomly these tokens two into each room so put those two there two there and so on again everybody will have a reference sheet so they'll have a quick glance as to which uh, character has which symbols okay so I went ahead and I set up the three identity cards over here so player one's a boogeyman with a skull icon uh, grandpa is player two and he's got the wrench and mom is player three and she has the flower. So if you look, the boogeyman is in the living room, grandpa is in the living room as well, and mom is in Leo's room. So basically starting with the boogeyman, player one, you look at his hand, he's got four cards. Now you get to play two cards, activate their abilities, activate the card abilities, then draw back up. So boogeyman being skulls, definitely wanna play skull cards and would probably want to play some in, into Leo's room. So what I could do if I wanted to play bold is I could say, okay, I'm gonna play the three skulls. Actually, you could play those over to here, and then draw two clue cards to kind of open up his hand a little bit. And then have another skull card. I'll play that here, and it says play an additional face down card. Well, I don't want to score anything else, so this has a lot of whoever the flower person is. So I'll play this face down into the living room where I'm at. I've got three cards, I draw back up to four cards, and that ends player one's turn. So player two, Grandpa, who is in the living room as well with the boogeyman, is probably pretty excited because there's two cards in his row already. He wants to play wrenches. So you see he's got a bunch of cards with abilities on him that don't just have the icons at the top. So this one's pretty cool. The above card that's played uh, is worth double the symbol. So for example, if he played this card on here, this card above it would be worth six skulls and two fish. So this is a very beneficial card for grandpa to hold on to, especially if you play something with a wrench. The magnifying glass lets you pick up five cards from the clue pile and rearrange them uh, any way you would like, which could definitely be helpful to stack the deck against the following players if 
Later in the game, you'll, you'll discover who they are. So like if grandpa knew that mom was mom, uh, you could search the pile and maybe bury some of the cards with flowers on them. And he has a spider card. And this one, Evidence Extractor, place this card face up in a room and extract any other card in that room into your hand. So that might be a bad idea. Let's say that this card was played on this person earlier. Well, Grandpa wants this card to play it on something that'll help him. So he could play this Evidence Extractor, play it here, and he would then take this card or any card into his hand. Okay. This could also help if he wanted to get rid of the scratched photos in here. He could play this to pull this up and whoever places this card down is now not going to get those points at the end of the game. And then Grandpa could score this card face down later. So that's some of the different strategies. All right. so then I guess what Grandpa will do, Grandpa is a, is a wrench, so we will play this into, well, let's play this into the bathroom because Grandpa will gain a victory point. And then his second card, um, I don't really, don't really want to worry about the picking up the five cards this early in the game. So I will play this face down and I will play it in Leo's room and I'm going to move this clue thinking that somebody played this is in the kitchen and I'll move it over to here. I draw back up and that's the end of grandpa's turn. All right, now for mom, mom has Dolly and a kitchen knife, an old photograph, and a locked door. Now what this locked door does is you play this on a room and then nobody else can play any clues in this location until it's your turn again. So let's say I said, hey, I'm locking the door to the living room. Until my next turn, nobody can play any additional cards into the living room. So that would be good later in the game as we discover who, where Grandpa and the Boogeyman are. and say, hey, okay, you guys are in the living room, I'm locking the door. Those two players can't score any cards, or can't play any cards into that room. Remember, because they get one point for every card that's in their room at the end of the game. So mom's definitely gonna hold on to that card. And mom's flower and is in Leo's room. So mom will play, I guess a dolly into Leo's room. She lets her move a clue to this location. So she'll move the, the spider, why not? And then we'll say play this one and not wanting to draw attention. I'll play this one in the bathroom and gain a victory point. And then draw up two cards. So now, because mom moved a card into this location, this starts the guessing round. So everybody went once, so now we have the guessing round. So that was a scoring round, now it's a guessing phase here. So, you know, you could guess that, hey, Mom, or somebody, player three, moved a card into this room. So I wonder if mom, <laughs> keep saying mom, so I wonder if this player is one of these two characters. So the person who's player one can guess. So let's say, well, we noticed that you played a couple of flowers, but you also played some skulls, there's only one wrench. So player one right away could say, you know what? I don't think you're your dad, because you played a card with flowers. So I'm gonna say your mom, which <laughs> I don't know that you typically do that this early in the game, but let's say this person's bold. So mom says, you are correct, and the player one instantly gets, we're at sixth round, so they get six victory points. So get six points over to player one. Player two, grandpa, he doesn't have any clue who, where the boogeyman is or, or who player one is. And then, so he's gonna pass. And then mom, or player three, is who we now know is mom, um, could guess where grandpa is, but I think she would wait. So she would say, you know what? I'm not gonna guess either. So we're gonna pass the player one token over. We're gonna move down the clock, and we're gonna flip our first event card. And let me shuffle these event cards, because I know I showed one during the brief rules run through. So this one says, no guessing penalty for this round. So that's exciting. What that means is at the end of the round, when it comes time to guess, um, if you guess incorrectly, you don't give the other player points. So for example, if grandpa was trying to guess player one's identity and said, I guess that you are dad, 
Typically, if Grandpa were incorrect, the boogeyman would get the, the points for the round that you're at. Uh, that wouldn't happen because, the, because of this event card. There's no guessing penalty. So okay, so we're gonna take Grandpa's turn here. And Grandpa is a wrench symbol, so we're gonna play the wrench symbol here, which we get to draw two clue cards, because Grandpa doesn't have anything with wrenches, and he would really like some. Oh, okay, so he drew a flashlight. Now this flashlight, uh, reveal a face down card in a room that this card is placed. So he could then, he could play this in here for a second action. And flip that card, hey good, that helps him out. It gives him a wrench, but it also helps mom out because it just revealed three flowers. And he can also play an additional face down card because of that room's action. So let's say he is going to place a face down card. Um, we'll play it in here as well. He'll just be bold. And then he'll draw up to four cards. we will go to mom. So mom is going to want to play flower cards. Everybody knows that mom is mom, so mom's going to play them directly to her location. One, she can move a clue to that location. She'll move this one. And then she'll say two. And then she can move a clue card to this location. So she's going to move, she'll move this one over to her location. Then she'll draw up. And then it's Boogeyman's turn. And again, he skulls. So he is going to, he has, does nothing, it's only a shadow, lock a room. So he is going to lock this room so that mom cannot play any more cards into this room until his next turn. And then he's also going to play this card face down over here. And this lets him play an additional face down card. And let, let me know too that when he locked this door, the boogeyman would not want to move a card to this location unless he was dead, because it would help mom. So we'll play an additional face down card and I'll place it here. And we will draw back up to four cards. And thus begins the guessing phase. So grandpa can guess and Grandpa noticed that the boogeyman locked this room and that he added a bunch of cards to this room. Now Grandpa knows that Grandpa's Grandpa. So he's going to say, hey, boogeyman, uh, I'm, or hey, player one, I'm guessing you're the boogeyman. At which point he would be correct and he would get the five bonus points. Mom's turn. Now everybody's identity has been revealed except for, the, except for Grandpa's. Mom can say, okay, well, let's see, you were playing cards here and there and everywhere. So let's say on a whim, mom guessed that player two was the rat. Well, she would be incorrect. And normally, grandpa would get those five points because we're that's where we are in the clock. But because there's no guessing penalty, no big deal. Mom's just fine and doesn't, uh, there's no, no penalty. So we carry on. So we're going to move the player one marker down. We're going to decrease the clock. We'll flip a new event card, and this one says, uh, every player could choose to discard their entire hand to the bottom of the clue deck for a new hand of four cards. So this would be beneficial, say, let's see, I don't know what mom has. Yeah, let's say mom wanted to, you know, hope for more cards with flowers, then she could discard her hand. So let's say that this is the end of the game. Let's say that the clock is, has struck zero. We're all done guessing. Let's tally points. How do we do that? So what we'll do is we'll start with player one. Player one is the boogeyman. So the boogeyman is going to score all skulls in play. So in this case, the boogeyman, we're going to count skulls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So that gets the boogeyman sixteen points. Okay. And then we'll also score the number of cards in the room the boogeyman's in, which is one, two, three, four, five. So the boogeyman will get an additional five points. We'll look at Grandpa. Grandpa's in the same room as the boogeyman, so we'll know he'll get five points for that. 
And then we count all the wrenches. One, two, three, four, five. Lousy game for grandpa. And again, we only played like two quick hands, but uh, typically there'd be more points that way. And then mom is flowers. So we have two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So mom will get 12 points for that. 10, 11, 12. And then mom will also get points for cards in her in Leo's bedroom. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we will just take a 10 and give back a one. So then we would total the points up. So mom would have 21 points. Grandpa would have 16 points. And the boogeyman has 27. And that's it. That's the scoring. And that is the basics of the game. Now I will take you back up top and let you know my thoughts. All right, guys, so that was Noises at Night. So let me start by saying that everything that you saw in that playthrough was a prototype copy of the game. Uh, very, very high quality prototype for sure, but just keep that in mind, uh, it doesn't represent the final components. If the final components are anything like the prototype, the components will be fantastic. So definitely uh, the, the prototype copy looked very nice. A high quality uh, for a prototype, that's for sure. Now, let me first start off by saying that this is a game that's recommended for ages six and up. Uh, there is a little bit of reading, so if your six-year-old that you're playing it with uh, isn't quite as quick at picking up reading, um, or uh, just keep in mind that you might have to read those items to uh, a younger player. But that in mind, I definitely think that this is playable by younger families. In fact, I think this game thrives as a family game. Uh, I'm always looking for something that I can play with my family, uh, with my kids. My kids age from 11 all the way on down to five. I have three of them. So if I can play a game with kids, with my kids, then it's, it's definitely a bonus because it helps bring them into the hobby that I love so much. All right, so let's talk about the gameplay. So the gameplay was easy to pick up. It was definitely easy to teach both uh, my kids as well as the older people that I played with. I always play games with my family if I can when I'm reviewing them, uh, as well as I try to incorporate some of my seasoned gamer friends that I, I play the heavier games with, just to kind of see if the game is going to be well received outside of just its initial audience. I believe that this is, the audience is definitely that this is a family game. Uh, but then let me say that this game definitely has enough strategy that it, it makes a good filler game with more seasoned gamers, people that are into hardcore games. If you want to take a break in between, you know, Twilight Imperium and Eclipse, and you play this in between, it, it still offers enough strategy to keep you entertained. So uh, let me say that off the bat. So this game is great for families and it definitely does well as a, as a filler game for seasoned gamers. Now, the gameplay was great. It was very, um, you know, it was very simplistic. You play two cards, you do the actions that they, that they have, if the cards have an action or the rooms that you play them on, and then you draw back up. So that was very easy to pick up on and to communicate to my kids. They picked, on it, picked up on it quite quickly and the game plays very, very smoothly. And you go through, and, and it really plays quickly, and you can play some games, I, I'd say, in as little as 10 minutes. I've had some games go for 25 minutes. Again, I played a, a lot of game, a lot of playthroughs of this with my kids, so those will tend to go a little longer. Um, but the game is, the gameplay is smooth, and it's, it's very enjoyable. The replayability factor on this game. So I definitely think that this has a high replay uh, factor to it. Uh, again, I played countless games of this with my kids. I, I probably up to 15 or 20 gameplays in, the, in really the last couple of weeks alone, not counting when I first received the game. Um, this is a game that you can fit in your pocket, you could take with you somewhere and just break out and it's a, it's a quick, easy setup and a fun playthrough, a fun game to play through. So I definitely think that you'll get replay out of this game, especially if you're playing this with your family and, and younger gamers. I, I also think this would be very good for um, family get-togethers. Um, this is something that I would play with maybe my, you know, my mother-in-law or you know, families, aunts and uncles that might come to town that you maybe can't introduce them to something like a Dominion. 
Um, but you know, you, you want to play something more than just Ticket to Ride with them. I, this definitely fits that bill. So all in all, I definitely recommend this game. Uh, is, again, it's a perfect game for, for families. It's a perfect game as a filler game for heavy gamers. It's a lot of fun. We've really enjoyed it and I, I would definitely recommend this. All right, guys, that's it. I'm Lee for Geek City USA. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Make sure you check us out on Facebook. Interact with us in the comments, and I'd love to hear from you guys. Once again, thanks for hanging out with us, and I'll see you next time. Take care.